welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Danielle and I'm back with another week in the life of a hairstylist I really want to start posting more of these whether it's week or just a day in the life but it's a little hard because if I know I'm going to have a week where it's people that I don't particularly want to film then I'm not really going to want to do a week in my life but this week all of my clients have either been with me already or they're just clients that I'm comfortable filming and I know that they like won't really care so I'm gonna do another week in my life and I'm super excited so today is Wednesday just for those of you that don't know like who I am or if you're new to my channel I obviously am a hairstylist I've pretty much almost been a hairstylist for a year, which is crazy. Once I hit my actual year mark, I'll probably do a video about like my first year of being a hairstylist, but yes, I work in the Rhode Island area and I work Wednesday through Saturday, so it's a really good schedule. I work eight hours every single shift some i work a little bit more depending on who's coming in but yeah so today is wednesday and it's the start of my week and i'm basically just going to take you guys along with me through all of the clients that i do and show you guys like all the process and stuff like that so i really hope you guys enjoy if you haven't subscribed already make sure to subscribe and if you enjoy this video don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up but I'm heading to work now, so I will talk to you guys when I get there. So this is my first client, Rachel. This is her fourth session with me, trying to get from black box dye to as blonde as we can get. And unfortunately, when it comes to black box dye, there's only so much you can do. And she's moving to New York, so this is her last appointment with me. So we pretty much just tried to get her as blonde as we could with the least amount of damage as we could. So this is her before. She hasn't come to me in like three to four months, so there is quite a bit of regrowth. But I did a full head of TZ lights because that's what I've been doing from the beginning. And I kind of wanted to follow the same pattern so that we were highlighting the same pieces so that it wasn't like too many different colors because black box dye does lift obviously very warm so if you're lifting the pieces that you already have lifted in the previous appointments that's what's going to get blonder and blonder over time but if you continue to just lighten the pieces that are dark you're going to have some light pieces some yellow some orange maybe some red honestly black box dye has a mind of its own when it comes to lightener so you kind of just got to work with what you got and hope for the best. So here, as you can see, I'm working with the right quadrant of her head. I started in the back. I always like to start in the back because, God forbid, pieces are lightening faster than the front. You can just take them to the sink, take the back out, rinse them, and leave the front pieces in. So I always do the back first, and right now I'm alternating weaves and slices. So this section I did a weave, teased it, and then kind of paint it on an angle to give it some dimension and depth so that it's brighter in the face and leaves kind of like a rooted appearance in the back for when I do a shadow root. And then I just repeat the same exact process on the other side. So I'll alternate slices, weave, slice, weave, slice, weave, all the way up until the top of her head.
once the lightener processes, I rinsed it out and shampooed her, and now we're doing the shadow root. I ended up using Redken Shades EQ, equal parts 5N and 5NA, just to kind of get rid of any warmth that was lifted at the root. And all I do for this is just take horizontal sections in the front quadrants, same thing with the back, just horizontal sections all the way up, and just apply it where I know the shadow root is going to start and end. And then to finish it off, I just brush everything through with my wet brush. So once I finished the shadow root, I let that sit for 20 minutes and brought her back to the sink to do the toner. And I ended up toning her with 8N, 7P, and like literally the smallest dash of 6NB. And then again, let the toner sit for 20 minutes. Then I came over, gave her a nice healthy trim blow dried it, and now we're curling. I just recently bought this new Hot Tools 1 and a fourth inch curling iron, and I actually really like it. It does work a little bit different on different people's hair types, but I love how it turns out. It's really beachy, which is my go-to, but I love it. So this is how it ended up turning out. Obviously, like you can tell, she's not platinum blonde. But when you're working with black box dye, you just got to work with what you got. And I still think it came out absolutely gorgeous. My client loved it as well. And it just came out so much better than what she had before. Alrighty, so I am back home. It's 5.30. I'm dying right now. So I'm sitting in my living room. And the reflection from the sun is hitting my camera. So like a little tiny glare <laughs> is like roaming the room and my small dog is freaking out right now but anyways after the first client that i showed all i had after her was a gray coverage client and a men's haircut so i didn't really film those because they're pretty self-explanatory and nothing crazy the gray coverage client is a regular of mine she comes every like three to four weeks and I just put like a 6N on her root and sometimes she comes in and gets highlights. And then the men's haircut was just a scissor cut. It was so easy. It took me like 25 minutes. But now I'm home and I'm just going to relax for the rest of the night. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Hello you guys. So it's the next day. It's Thursday and it's 11. Wait, why is my Apple Watch not working? Oh, okay. It's 11. Thursdays are my late night, so I work 12 to 8. So typically I leave my house at like 11.30, but I need to stop at Salon Centric to buy some color because the salon is out. We should be receiving a package soon, but as of right now, we don't really have a lot. So I just have to stop and buy my mom's root coverage color because I think the lightest we have is six but I use a seven and if I used a six on her, oh my God, she'd be like, it's too dark. <laughs> so, so yeah, just so you guys know, I do not rent my chair yet. I am still a commission stylist, so I have to use the products that we have at the salon. But once you rent a chair, you obviously have to buy your own stuff. But yeah, I just wanted to say that for any of those who are confused, but my goal is to start renting either this coming spring or next summer because I actually can't start renting my chair until I've been a stylist for a year. So my year mark is in October. So I technically could start renting in October, but it makes me a little nervous. <laughs> and my mom and I had like a long talk about it because she was like the holiday season as far as Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, like all of that. It's a busy time so like I feel like I should start renting in October because that's when it's the busiest but then like January February and March just are really slow so I'm like well maybe I should just wait until April and like the summer so I don't really know what I'm gonna end up doing but for now I'm still a commission stylist so just about pulling into salon centric so I will talk to you guys when I get to the salon. So here's my first client of the day. This is her hair before. And I just wanted to talk to you about her hair history. 
So she used to be really blonde and then she went to brunette and had her hair colored at a different salon. And then a few months ago, we actually used Redken Shades 1B, which is pretty much blue-black on her whole entire head, and this is what it's faded to. So now her goal is to go back to blonde, but since she has such a wide variety of hair history, I wanted to do a test strand, and this is how it turned out. So, as you can see, her regrowth lifted very well, but then all of her hair under the regrowth lifted very brownish orange kind of red a little so obviously we wouldn't be able to get her to a nice blonde for the first session but she agreed on doing like a nice caramelly brown situation so that is what we did so because she had such a significant amount of regrowth that lifted wicked nice but the rest didn't lift so good I did a full head of TZ lights and I just blended it to where I knew the regrowth ended so that we wouldn't have a harsh band of really light blonde to like a caramelly brown if you get what I'm saying. So here you can see me taking alternating slices and then weaves and when I do the slice I tease it to diffuse any harsh lines. And I usually start by saturating the middle, get the ends, and then blend it straight up. And like you can see, I didn't blend it very far up, just so that it wouldn't be touching her regrowth. toner which is my favorite part and I just wanted to let you guys know that I did do a root shadow on her I used equal parts 5n and 5na I did that at my chair and now she's currently at the sink and as she's at the sink with the root color on is when I'll mix my toner and then I just apply the toner when the root shadows on I feel like it's way easier that way and it helps to blend so just thought I'd say that. But yeah, here I'm toning with 8N, 7P, and a little bit of 7NB. And then I just do equal parts of the processing solution. So again, here's the before. And after I styled, this was the after. So definitely not blonde again, but because of her history and the test strand, this was what we were able to do. It came out so pretty, such a nice caramelly brown and good for the first session. So then my next client was my mom. She hasn't seen me in about like five to six weeks. So we're touching up her gray and giving her a face frame highlight. So like I said earlier, when I went to Salon Centric to go buy her color, I just use the Redken Chromatics Permanent Line and I use 7NN. And all I really do for gray coverage clients is I separate into four quadrants, two in the back, two in the front. And I always start in the front because that's where the gray is the most prominent. I then take horizontal sections and I just apply it to the regrowth and it's pretty easy. Gray coverage clients are the fastest and easiest and they're one of the better clients to have because they always come in either four to six weeks and like I said, super quick and super easy.
now that the root color is fully applied, I then moved on to the face frame highlight. I already did the right side, but I just wanted to show you guys me doing the left side. So here I am starting at the lowest point, which is like around her ear. And I take very, very fine sections and I alternate with weaves and slices. And I kind of just work my way around her face. Everyone has a different hairline, so you kind of just got to work with everyone's specific hairline differently. And a face frame is typically 15 to 20 foils, and I'm pretty sure that's what I did. So she was pretty bright around her whole entire head, but she just wanted a few extra pops in the face. So that is what we did. So after I let that process for about 30 minutes, I brought her to the sink, rinsed her out, shampooed and conditioned, and she just has such a good natural lift that she doesn't like any toner. So we didn't tone her. <laughs> but now I'm just doing a haircut. She wanted a lot more layers, so I'm just doing square layers, and I never really show haircuts, like me doing them, so... Here's a time lapse of me giving her square layers. again and here's her after I forgot to take a picture at the salon so we did it in my backyard <laughs> but it came out so good and we both absolutely loved it good morning it is the next day it's Friday I can't believe it's Friday already doesn't feel like it but today is gonna be a very hectic day I am working a wedding wedding season is absolutely insane this year I think it's just because of COVID last year everything got canceled so everything's getting moved to this summer and I am working so many weddings but I also love it because it's such good money and they're fun and it gives you a chance to like get out of the salon for a little but it also kind of sucks when you have to like go into the salon, go to the wedding, go back to the salon to take more clients, which is what's happening today. So it's almost eight o'clock. Typically I leave my house at 8.30 and work nine to five on Fridays, but I'm going into the salon a little bit early today because I have to take three blowouts before the wedding. So then after the three blowouts, I have to drive to the wedding, do four updos, and then drive back to the salon to take a haircut and another blowout. So it's like easy, but it's also just so much traveling and it makes me feel like tired, but I got this. We got this. <laughs> got my big water today. <laughs> Getting it ready. But I'm going to try to film as much as I can. I probably won't really be able to because I'm on like a very tight schedule. So the blowouts this morning are like literally only 30 minutes back to back, three of them. So I probably won't film those because they're just blowouts. Like you just shampoo them and blow dry their hair. I might do curls if they ask, depending if it's like an event or something. I will take pictures of the updos though and show you guys that because I know that's like something fun to look at and then obviously when I go back to the salon I probably won't film the haircut or the blowout I don't know we'll see today is gonna be a little weird but I'll talk to you guys when I talk to you guys guys so it is Saturday the last day of my work week and I'm so excited I know I didn't film like anything yesterday it was just literally the most hectic day and other than the wedding updos nothing was really fancy so I just didn't really film much but today 
I have three haircuts and then my friend Jordan is coming in and getting full balayage, maybe teasy lights, I don't know yet. But I'm so excited to film her because she has some of like the best hair ever. But it's currently 8.18, I'm heading to work. My first client's at 8.45 and I'll probably be finishing her at like 4.45, 5 o'clock, depending on how long Jordan goes for. But yeah, I'm so excited to film Jordan's process and for you guys to see, but I'll talk to you guys later. All right, guys. Well, I am home from work. It's actually like 7 o'clock. I got out of work at 4 and ended up going out to dinner with a few people that work at the salon. But today got a little messed up because... Like I said, I had three haircuts. I ended up getting booked a last minute blowout and then I was supposed to have my friend Jordan come in, but she ended up not coming in just because she didn't feel good and I wanted to be like on the safer side. So she didn't end up coming to her appointment, but I did get booked two blowouts like for the time she was supposed to be there. So I guess it worked out, not really because I made a little bit less than I would like for her highlight, but at least I had something to do. So pretty much my whole day consisted of haircuts and blow dries. It was all right with me, but it just sucks that I didn't really get to film a lot. What? <laughs> my dog. Oh, dogs want to join. <laughs> but anyways, I feel like this is honestly good because it's good to film like a ton of my weeks so that you guys can truly understand like every week is going to be different. You're not going to have the same clients every week, like the same types of services. You're always going to have one day that's totally off. You're going to have a few days that are totally off. You're never going to have like consistent income. And I feel like it's just good to show so that for my people in cosmetology school or even just hairdressers already, you can truly understand like what it's like. So yeah, not everything is picture perfect. Things happen, things get changed around, but in the end it ends up working out. So I'm glad I was able to at least fill something within that time frame and it wasn't just like oh i'm just gonna leave so that was good but yeah i'm just a little bummed that i wasn't able to film as much for you guys but i promise i'm gonna do more of these week in my life even if you guys want to see day in my life rather than weeks in my life i can definitely do that I really want to do tutorials again for like specific techniques and stuff so let me know what you guys want to see but yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this week in my life if you did don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i will see you all in my next video bye guys